Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are in the world joining us today. My name is Chad Tibbetts. I'm a training specialist with Asadol Academy. Uh, so glad that you joined me today on this Friday. I hope the weather is better where you are than it is where I am. Uh, it's been raining all morning, um, and all well, getting into the afternoon. But uh, anyway, hope you're having a great day. Uh, just a few housekeeping things before we get started. If this is the first time joining us, welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, but that info page that was there wasn't just to help keep time for the start of this, it was also to give you some valuable information. So everybody is muted, but you can use the Q&A feature built into this Zoom webinar to ask me questions at any point during this. I've actually got the window up and I'm going to be monitoring it during the presentation today. Um, also, you're, um, I'm going to edit and post this up on our website for you to review again should you need to, or if you know anybody in your office that uh, needs the information, they can go and find that under previously recorded uh, webinars and you can get to that, okay? Also, if you need proof of attendance, either for your own office or for um, our industry partners for CEUs, you're gonna get an email from us thanking you for your attendance within 24 hours. And also, while you're on our website, please sign up for Asa Abloy Academy we have over 50 online courses from everything to how to hand a door to um, installation of products to all kinds of in, uh, industry knowledge um, and also also products. So our online academy is completely free for you to use. It does not require any type of authorization or permission to join from our end. So please uh, take advantage of all of that. And we're always adding new classes. I think last year we added 25 new online courses. They're about an hour long or so. Some of them are short, nice 10 minute, 25 minute long uh, informational sessions, but check that out. So uh, today's class is going to be on the Norton 6300 series low energy operator. Uh, this is an updated unit and it actually can be programmed with a Wi-Fi capable device. So we're going to actually get into the details of the operator and also how we uh, program it and set it up with a Wi-Fi uh, device. Today I'm going to be using an iPad. So with everything at Asabli, it's always safety first. So I want to remind everybody that low energy operators, uh, at least uh, most of our low energy operators, are plugged into a um, 110 AC power source so you can get electrocuted if you're poking around. You're not supposed to be, so uh, wear your proper PPE and uh, follow safety guidelines when you're working on any of these products. Chad, your voice keeps fading in and out. Okay. Thanks, Russell. We're going to switch microphones. We'll try that. Russell, is that better? Talk a little bit more. Testing, testing. Everybody hear me? Actually, it's not really much better. We can hear you better. It's not fading in and out, so you can use this one. Okay. All right. We're going to continue on. So agenda for today's class, just so we, uh, we cover everything and so I stay on track. We're going to go through a brief uh, history video of Norton. We'll talk about the differences between uh, low energy and high energy operators, because I know when I first got in industry, I didn't know there was a difference. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some terms, operations, features, and functions of the 6300 operator. Uh, that'll get us into an overview. We'll talk about where this operator fits into our openings, what type of market, uh, what type of openings where this uh, fits really well. We'll give you an example of uh, how to order it through the catalog. We'll look at a, a list cost uh, breakdown. If you're ordering something specific, we don't get into discounts and buying programs or anything like that with the Academy, but we'll look at the price book and show you kind of how that works. Then, uh, provided that technology is on our side, which I think it will be, we're going to go through a live demonstration of how we interface an iPad to this operator and then show you the website basically that the operator is porting over to the iPad so we can change all of the settings. 
And at the very end, I want to show you guys some digital tools that if you're not aware, can help you find information, get in touch with us, find installation guides, catalog pages, sell sheets, cut sheets, etc. So without uh, anything else, we're going to get right into um, history and then continue with today's class. Thank you. In the mid-1870s, at a pastor's request, Louis C. Norton quieted a door at Trinity Church in Boston with his first door closer. From that Boston church to our headquarters in Monroe, North Carolina, things have come a long way. But even with the many advances in product design and manufacturing, our focus continues to be on the needs of our customers. Our engineering team uses the latest software to develop innovative, high-quality, and reliable door control products. From standard door closers to fully electronic door operators, our products are designed with commercial and institutional environments in mind. These products are then produced using high-tech manufacturing and assembly techniques in our ISO 14001 certified operation. And of course, rigorous testing is done to ensure the quality necessary for tough applications and to meet ANSI BHMA standards. And our most important asset is our people. These hardworking professionals are dedicated to making the best door control product you'll ever buy. And we're dedicated to making Norton a great place to work. For all these reasons and more, we think Mr. Norton would be proud our continuing dedication to making innovative, quality products to meet our customers' needs. I always like to show that video whenever we're doing a class on Norton. I think it uh, does a really good job of explaining and, and showing all of the great things that Norton does and their, their rich history. One of the things that the video talked about was the ANSI BHMA testing that is done on site and then also third party verified um, by the testing uh, facility. So all of our Norton operators are third party tested and they're tested for durability, cycle life. Uh, a lot of the features are tested as well. So when we say that it can handle a certain amount of use um, or abuse or cycle life or durability, then just know that all of that is being uh, tested and verified, not just by us, but by a third party. So who is BHMA? Uh, BHMA is the Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association. And the association develops and maintains uh, performance standards for hardware. So uh, you can have uh, lever locks and mortise locks and deadbolts and door closers and all kinds of things um, tested to BHMA uh, standards. And then ANSI is the American National American National Standards Institute, and they develop and oversee the process for how everything is, is going to be uh, tested. So you'll see ANSI BHMA together. Uh, just know that we, we want people to check and make sure that our products meet the standards um, of the industry. So that's why we have them tested. And then our low energy operators also meet the uh, CSA, the Canadian Standards Association um, standard C22.2247, if that's something that uh, you need to have up in your area. So let's get into high energy versus low energy briefly, quickly. We'll talk about uh, what that means. So our high energy operators with Asabli are manufactured by Asabli entrance system. So that's a different division of Asabli. Norton is a part of Asabli door security solutions and entrance systems is a, is a different group. Norton only manufactures low energy operators. So a high energy operator is one that you would see at this um, in a grocery store. You'd see them in the front doors of many hospitals. Many big box stores are going to have these big sliding doors that open automatically when you uh, walk up to them. So they do not require a knowing act to get the door open. So if I'm staring at my cell phone, I can walk right up to the door, provided that I'm not going too fast. And that door should open before I get there. Now, high energy operators oftentimes 
are sold with uh, maintenance programs from the manufacturer or, or somebody else that is certified to install and maintain that operator, right? Uh, a regular end user would have to go through special training on a high energy operator to modify any of the settings, maintain it, program it, and, and so on. And oftentimes with high energy operators, when you pull the cover, there may be um, a circuit board with dip switches and dials, potentiometers where you can change settings, but they're oftentimes not labeled. And they do that on purpose so that people that are not certified to work on those high energy operators don't modify anything because um, they could potentially hurt somebody if you bypassed safety sensors or sped it up beyond um, the regulations. So just know that. Here's a quick clip of me walking through a high energy operator. This is on the back of our mobile installation training showroom. And notice I didn't push any button to walk through the door, just walk up to it. Everybody's probably walked through one of these doors. Now, low energy operators, now that was an oversimplification of high energy operators, but low energy operators, again, Norton manufactures those and they have uh, five or six models, different variations of those low energy operators. And they do require a knowing act in order to open them. They're typically designed for doors that are going to get ADA use. You want to run a cart through it every once in a while. You want to be able to open the door with your hands full, that type of thing. But they do require a knowing act. So that means a push button, a wall plate, a, a button that's close to the floor for certain areas where they have wheelchairs that need to bump up against those buttons. You could also have a clicker, a fob that you use to open these doors but they are considered safe right out of the box. That's why we're considering them low energy operators. You don't have to have any extra safety sensors added to these operators to make them safe for the general public. You can, however, add a safety sensor to these operators and the 6300 has the ability to, to have safety sensors that uh, stop the door in motion if that safety sensor sees an obstruction, that obstruction could be you, it could be a cart, it could be something else in the way of the door. And those safety sensors are designed to stop the door in motion and either return it to a closed position or return it to a full open position, depending on how you have it set up. Just because we can add a safety sensor and a motion sensor does not mean that we should hook it up in a way that that sensor is an activation. Um, technically, you could do that, but again, we would be turning that operator from a low energy operator into a high energy operator. And along with that, we have all of the regulations that go with it. So um, safety sensors for obstruction only. So let's talk about some terms and uh, definitions. Low energy operators are really designed to work like a door closer in normal use and can be used for ADA access. But we do have operators out there that get used almost every single time that somebody walks the door. They're using it by hitting the button um, or they're using it in a push and go feature, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But there are some similar definitions to door closers. Closing time is the amount of time from a uh, full open position to close. But if you're tech talking about testing, and testing is going to be from a 90 degree point. So when the doors open 90 degrees to it gets to the 10 degree point, that's going to be our closing time. And so stick within the standard. We need to make sure that's at least five seconds. And then your last 10 degrees is your close check or your latch speed. That's also adjustable on most operators. And then our closing force, how much force that operator is, is pushing into the stop to close that door can be different between a electro hydraulic and electromechanical operator. Today's operator we're talking about is ele um, um, electromechanical. So we can change that force with the settings on the circuit board on the LCD screen. We can also change those settings using our Wi Fi capable device. So next, let's take a look at an advanced feature that we can turn on for the 6300.
So right here, what I'm demonstrating is I'm opening the door manually. I'm not using an activation switch. The door senses the movement open and the motor powers on to take some of that force away from me. If I was just walking through a door with a door closer and I was opening it up, the door closer would actually increase in force as I was opening it, unless it was a cam action closer. But here with this operator, it's sensing that I'm opening, it's kicking on the motor to make the door feel very, very lightweight. This is really good for facilities where you might have somebody that is walking through the door with a cane, Maybe they're not as stable on their feet and they tend to lean on levers or exit devices as they're leaving the door. This is great because it makes the door work like a door closer, but just really, really lightweight for the user. Now we should have an activation switch, but some people, uh, sometimes people don't see those activation switches. So power assist is a really cool feature built into the 6300 that we can turn on. The next feature we're going to uh, take a look at is push and go. So the way push and go works is you, if you open the door slower than the opening speed setting, the door will automatically start opening. If you open the door faster than the opening speed setting, it will not open. It'll work just like a standard door closer. So this particular feature, push and go, is again something that we can turn on. It doesn't come on automatically, but we can turn it on if we have a facility that is uh, wants it to be used that way. So for instance, we have an engineering facility here in Dallas that all of their operators are turned on with push and go because they're constantly moving carts in and out of the doors and they wanna be able to push that cart up against the door. The door senses that movement and then opens to its full programmed um, angle. Now, earlier when I was talking about power assist, you cannot have power assist and push and go running at the same time. And honestly, I wouldn't recommend push and go in a facility where um, people that are um, disabled will be using the door, um, unless it's just uh, wheelchairs. But if you have somebody that's going to be leaning on the door for support, and then that door leaves their hand and goes to a full open position, which on some doors, you can program the operator to open all the way to 180 degrees. Well, uh, that may startle the person, they may lose their support and could potentially um, fall and injure themselves so that we don't want that. Next, let's talk about obstruction detection. So ever since this operator came out, I've been very, very impressed with the obstruction detection capabilities. This operator has the ability to sense obstruction detection on both the open and closing motion of the door. And we can actually adjust how long the operator pushes on an object before it deems it an obstruction. Not the force, but how long. So. Uh, from a, one and a half seconds, I think all the way up to say seven seconds or so, but I'm really impressed about how lightweight the door is. It doesn't push against an object very, very hard before it triggers that obstruction detection. And many of these settings that I'm talking about are adjustable. This particular operator, as well as our 6000 series, has the ability to be hooked up in time in a vestibule situation. So a button press on the outside of a vestibule will trigger the first operator. And then you set an opening delay output, meaning that we're gonna signal a second operator to open after that delay has been set. So that a user only has to press one button, one button on the outside, and then the second operator will open automatically. And then you set it up in reverse. If they're on the inside of the building, they can also do that as well. So vestibule delay, uh, these are some advanced things that you can get on some of our other um, competitors products, but you have to pay extra for them. You have to, on some of them, you have to pay extra for built-in or for relay boards that get mounted on. And Norton likes to include these automatically. Next is in some facilities, 
you need the operator to go from a full closed position to a full open position if the fire alarm, smoke alarm goes off. This is in some facilities, there is a safe smoke area up the top of the building for evacuation. And we can trigger that uh, with an output and an input that allows the operator to open whenever the fire alarm, smoke alarm goes off. Uh, next, we're gonna watch a quick video that does a good job of uh, going through kind of an overview of this, and then we'll get into some more detail. Smart, simple, and good looking. The 6300 Low Energy Door Operator offers users enhanced safety and operation while blending with the aesthetics of your facility. Important safety options like latch assist ensures doors close and latch while obstruction detection safeguards all users. Push and go and power assist make each person's interaction with the door almost effortless. A modular four-piece design with a full-length backplate that doubles as a template allows for easy installation. And Norton introduces the first door operator with online programming capabilities on any device with a Wi-Fi connection. Programming and future adjustments are simple and straightforward, allowing users to make precise settings. Those same settings can also be standardized across multiple units through a USB port. This state-of-the-art development enables fast, easy commissioning and long-term ease of use, eliminating need for the expensive service contracts promoted by other, more complicated door operator companies. Featuring one of the industry's slimmest profiles, the 6300 operator blends into the frame of any single or double doorway. Smart, simple, and good-looking, Norton 6300 Low Energy Operator delivers all three, from open to close. One thing that I wanted to mention with that video, just so that everybody is clear, on our training doors that we use at Osobly Academy, as well as the sample doors that they have at Norton, we have our circuit boards turned basically upside down, where you can see them from the top. When you're doing the proper installation, your LCD screen, your three buttons to set your close, your open, and your learn, and your joystick are all going to be um, facing down so that you could see them standing underneath uh, the operator. So the operator that I have behind me that we're gonna take a look at in a little bit, that circuit board, that uh, control board is, is uh, the wrong way uh, down or the wrong way up, uh, just so that it's easier to show people how to use it. So I just wanted to mention that. Next, we're gonna take a look at the updates because this operator recently got the Wi-Fi programming. You saw that in the last video, but I do wanna show this video because it, it kind of goes through some of the other updates that we made. This operator was first available in 2017 and actually on my uh, mobile installation training vehicle, I have one of the uh, er original operators on that truck that is still functioning today after we have programmed it and set it up about 800 times and it is still functioning like it's supposed to. So, uh, but I do wanna show the updates because I think they're pretty significant. The Norton 6300 door operator has been upgraded to make setup and programming easier than ever before. Potentiometers and dip switches have been replaced with this user-friendly LCD panel, which is also Wi-Fi compatible. All the features available through Wi-Fi are also accessible on the LCD screen. Button number one is used to set the closed position. Button two is used to set the open position. And button number three is used to enter the learn mode. The door will step through an opening cycle as it learns its environment. Allow the door to complete the cycle and close before proceeding. All the other settings and features can be accessed using the joystick. Toggle up or down to arrive at the desired category, and then left or right to increase or decrease the value. When turning features on or off, 
toggle to the right for on and left for off. And finally, in the rare instance that a full factory reset is required, just hold down the small power off button for several seconds and all parameters will return to their original factory presets. One of the updates that they did with this operator is that now you can change it from a push mount to a pull mount and is also now available with different arms in a kit if you put a 40 in the last two digits of your part number when ordering then you'll get a, a push and pull kit it'll come with both arms the track arm and the regular arm uh, and then also they're already work right hand or left hand so out of that kit you could get this to work in just about any situation so let's watch that video installers of the norton 6300 door operator may find it necessary to switch the orientation of the unit from push application to pull or vice versa this is accomplished by simply flipping the closer body on the back plate First, disconnect the motor cable and the ribbon cable at the terminals adjacent to the power supply. Also, disconnect the small red wire which runs from the end cap to the green circuit board. Remove the three retaining clips which hold the wires to the closer body. Next, remove the four long screws to free the body from the back plate. Flip the closer over 180 degrees, then Reinstall the retaining clips, being sure to keep the wires neat and straight along the spring tube. Reattach the closer body to the back plate with the four long screws. Attach the small red wire from the end cap now to the back side of the closer body and reattach the ribbon and motor cables to the power supply. The 6300 operator is now ready for a pull application. To convert from a pull to a push application, simply reverse the procedure. All right, now we're going to attempt uh, the best of my ability to do a live demonstration of how we hook up an iPad to the Wi-Fi signal that the operator is broadcasting. So let me make sure that everybody is clear on this. If you're working in a facility that doesn't have power, or maybe they have power, but they don't have a network set up yet, you don't need to worry about network. I'm not gonna have my iPad hooked up to my network here in my office. It's actually just gonna be uh, communicating directly to the operator. So we need to, have that signal broadcast from the operator first. It's not broadcasting all of the time. And then the serial number that is on the operator is the default password that we would need to put in. That can be changed. So if you don't want somebody opening up the little side panel where the on and off switch is and seeing what the password is to get into your uh, operator and change settings, then you can change that password. You can make the password the same for all of the operators in your facility. Uh, just something that I uh, wanted to note. So here on this view, before we actually stop sharing and then look at a different view. So I want to highlight that that, and I'm horrible at drawing circles, but that Wi-Fi light needs to be on in order for it to be broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. So if you're having a hard time finding this operator on your phone or an iPad or, or laptop, then we need to make sure that that Wi-Fi light is on. So let me clear all that. Now I'm gonna stop share and I would like everybody to switch to speaker view. When I do that, that's going to highlight uh, the, the camera that you're looking at right now, make it bigger so that when I show the camera pointed at the iPad, it'll be easier for everybody to see. Uh, if you're on a cell phone or an iPad doing this class today, you can pinch and zoom and uh, it should, be, should help you uh, find things a little bit easier. It may go, might be better off going side by side speaker. Okay, 
Side by side speaker is what Russell says. Right now you're filling up the whole screen. Okay. All right, Russell, how's that? You're filling up the whole screen. Yeah, that's what I wanna do. So speaker view is the best view. Okay, great. Speaker view is the best view. So hopefully everybody can see this. So right here on the test door, I have my control board actually facing up so that I can see everything. Uh, we're not gonna show you this, but we're going to move over to the iPad that I have set up over here with another camera. But the first thing that I need to do is turn that Wi-Fi broadcast on. And we can do that simply from the on and off switch here on the side, toggling it three times. And then the light at the top that I was showing you in just a second ago will illuminate red. All right, my red light is on. I'm gonna change uh, camera views here. Okay, hopefully everybody can see. Hopefully everybody can see my iPad. So what we wanna do is go to your Wi-Fi. Check your networks and you're going to see that it says NDC 6300 followed by your serial number. So we're going to click on that network. If you're clicking on the network for the first time, it's going to ask you for the password. The password is going to be the last digits of your serial number and that can be found inside the cover to the on and off switch. Okay, we are now off of our regular Wi-Fi. We're talking to the operator. Next, what you wanna do in your browser, go to your browser, whether it's Safari, Chrome, uh, Firefox, whatever you've got, and type in that 192.168.1.1. I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh here. And the first thing that it's going to show you is this home screen where we can click on these buttons, status, setup, settings, connections, and support. So if we wanna click on status right now, we are talking to the operator because if we weren't, we wouldn't have this screen. So we'll look at our status of our little test operator that we have here. It's got a firmware version, hardware version. We have no errors, that's good. Uh, cycle count for this operator, the uh, door open time, uh, seven seconds, door close time, how long it's uh, all set up. Relay one is off, uh, has a temperature on here. So we're gonna go up to setup, click on the next tab over. And right here, it's gonna step one, we need to set, is it a push or a pull? Then with the door closed, gives you instructions that we're going to close the door completely and then click uh, push the closed button. Next, once we do that, we need to fully open the door and press the open position. So if we uh, have the door, we want it only set to 90, then that's where we'd set the door. If uh, we have it on the pull side and we have it installed and we have the ability to open it 180 because it's in a corridor, then open it to 180, hold it there, and then you would uh, press the set open position then you will let the door return back to a closed position. And then we'll hit this learn button. The learn button will learn the environment the door is and set all of the closing speed, the closing force, all of those things automatically. Now we can change them if we want to, but it will set them to ADA guidelines automatically. If we go into settings, the first tab there is speed slash force, and we can look at all of our values. So if we wanted a latch speed that was faster, let's say it was at five and we want it to increase, we can increase that to 10 and hit save. Now I wanna let you know that this is happening real time on the operator. 
So if we went to the operator right now, and let's say we changed the opening speed and we turned it uh, down to two, once we hit save, it immediately communicates that to the operator and saves that value. The next tab is timing and location, and we can set where we want latch to engage. If you have a, a really, really windy area and you have the door that, that tends to float, we can make the latch value at a greater angle, which will kick in that closing force a little bit earlier in the cycle. The back check location is also set electronically. Default is at 74 degrees. We can set back check to not engage until 90 or as soon as 60 degrees for those really, really abusive uh, high use doors where people are always trying to kick the, kick the door open. We can set that back look back check location to um, happen sooner. Okay, the hold open time is adjustable and the obstruction detection sensitivity. Again, this is a time. So 0.3 seconds all the way up to five seconds. This is the amount of time that the operator will push on something before it tells it that it's an obstruction. In options, we can have our latch assist. Latch assist is great when you have an electric strike or an electrified exit device. It will pull the door in to the stop before it triggers your access control lock, your electric strike or your, your exit device. Um, potentially, uh, if, it's a, if it's in a bind, it will release that bind and then the door will open. The obstruction detection while closing is currently off, but we could turn that on. Uh, push and go is off. Our power close is set to begin at seven degrees. We can also have it set to start uh, closer at two degrees. Power assist is off. We could turn that on if we wanted to. And this ignore obstruction, those are in case you have a safety sensor, a safety motion sensor plugged into the device, we can have it ignore an obstruction less than a particular angle, right? So that's those settings there. And then we can energize a 24 volt output at a particular angle if you are hooking this up to say an electric strike or an exit device or some other access control lock. If we go into connections, these are all of your advanced things where we're hooking it up to access control, we're hooking it up to fire alarm systems and you can go through there and all of the inputs can be changed. So right now input one is open activation but if I wanted it set up to where input one was for the executive mode, I could change it. So very, very customizable. In this last support tab, we can download a log. So if your facility for preventative maintenance measures needs a log of how much this door is being used, you can download a log. You can just look at it if you want to. We can restore defaults. And right here, there's a setup need help. You can get in touch with Norton technical support team at that phone number between 8 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. So I think they've done a really good job of setting this up. And this will automatically time out after 20 minutes. But if you're finished programming the unit and you want it to stop broadcasting its Wi-Fi signal, then all you have to do is toggle the on and off switch three more times and that will kill the Wi-Fi uh, that the operator is broadcasting.
So I hope you got some benefit from that. I'm gonna share my screen again. For configuration options for this operator, Norton is, does a really good job of designing these charts to where we can see exactly what uh, part number they would be depending on what we want, right? This operator comes in two different lengths. So the 37 and 3 8 in overall length or the uh, 39 and 5 8 The idea between the longer one is if you have a 7-0 door with a two inch frame face, then this unit is just shy of those 40 inches and it looks very, very clean and seamless there on the top of the door. But check all of these out. I'll show you how to access the um, Asabli Resource Center with Norton to find all of these useful charts here in just a couple of minutes. So when we're talking about applications, you got to think about what this operator is uh, capable of. So on a push side, you're walking, um, the, the door is on the push side of the door. It can power open to 135 degrees. Um, that's quite a bit. That's more than most operators. So that's, that's a plus. On the pull side, if you don't have an obstruction in the way, it will actually, you can template it and open it all to a full 180 degrees. So if it's a corridor, that's great. You can get that door to hold open all the way up against the wall. You can get this in, like I said earlier, a universal pull, push, right hand, left hand kit that comes with the push and the pull arms. It's very, very low profile. So if you have a lot of things above your door, that would normally prevent an operator uh, from having room because this one is so slim. Oftentimes it will fit. It is a medium to heavy duty operator designed for doors up to 200 pounds. Uh, door width up to 48 inches. Uh, double egress door applications are available. You did, do need to specify the hand of each one of those units. Uh, we can also do double door and with double door just note that it's not a continuous cover it is two operators uh, next to each other and it comes standard with a two-year limited warranty for activation methods there are several different uh, switches that you can get wall switches wave to open switches that are available as far as motion sensors also and fobs where you can order this um, uh, Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi, but uh, wireless for your uh, wired, uh, wireless fobs or even wireless push buttons. Uh, here's a listing of several that are available, both in narrow style, uh, double gang, uh, recessed into an existing box. So if your electrician puts a wall box, uh, that you can use those as well. And we have some that are built into a box that surface mount onto the wall. Also, we have uh, 36 inch long uh, plates that go down for wheelchairs to bump up it into uh, some facilities uh, require that in their code. For the part number layouts, Norton does a really good job of having all of their part number layouts consistent. So that's across all of their product, their door closers, their operators, the first two digits are always going to be the series. Uh, the next digit in this case is going to be the configuration of that. The fourth digit is going to be the length, which, uh, which length do we want, followed by the finish. And then any extra things that we want are going to trail that part number. So let's take a look at the uh, price list. Again, this is a training class. We're not providing quotes here today. So we only look at list cost and Norton has the right to uh, change these prices at any time. This is just an example of how you would use the price book. So right now we are uh, first page or on the table of contents on the second page, we're looking at the 6,300. It tells us to go to page 46. I'm going to price 
the uh, double lever arm. And if we do that, the 6332 double lever arm, I want the full length operator. I would like the 700 series wave to open touchless switches. Uh, I think they're really awesome. We can just wave and the activation will work within four inches of the wall switch. And I'd also like a presence detector. That's that um, motion sensor that can uh, trip up obstruction because I think that that's necessary in some facilities. So we need uh, two or we need the operator, two wall switches, uh, one presence uh, sensor, and then that's my total list price uh, right there. Uh, next, I want to show a video of the uh, touchless solutions that we've put together since COVID, and uh, they're going to stay in our, our catalog. We'll continue doing this, and then... The Norton portfolio of low-energy operators provides many hands-free methods for opening all varieties of doors. Radio frequency devices automatically open doors when coming into the range of the door operator's sensor. Wave to open switches, coupled with Norton Low Energy Operators, allow occupants to easily move through a building without transferring germs or leaving messy fingerprints. These highly sensitive devices pick up hand gestures within four inches of the switch, ensuring operation only when intended. From bathrooms to building entrances, these touchless door operating solutions provide a healthy means for meeting ADA requirements in all sorts of buildings. Norton offers complete kits of all components needed to automate a door, including a low energy operator and wave to open switch. Wave switches and RF devices are also sold separately. Leverage the proven reliability of Norton door controls to ensure the ease of use and safe operation of all building doors, from open to close. So if you're like me, you're always trying to find information. And if we can find information easily, then I'm all for it. And I personally think the easiest way to find this information when it, uh, in, for Asabli at least, is the Asabli customer support app. This is something that even me as a trainer, I use it all the time. It's a free app available on Android and Apple. And it allows you to get in touch with customer service and tech support right on your phone. So if you're working on the 6300, maybe you've got a question, you can actually live stream a video with a tech rep and show them exactly what you're working on. So it really cuts down on that uh, communication time back and forth. You can show a tech rep exactly what you're, what you're doing. I think that's really, really beneficial. Uh, not only can you do that, but the app also directs you to the Asabli Resource Center. And the Resource Center houses our digital library that has the catalogs, the price book, it has all of your installation sheets, your uh, cut sheets, sell sheets, everything that you could need about our product is all available through the app that ties to our website. Uh, warranty certificates, everything else uh, are also contained there. Um, in that app. Now we're not downloading all of that information to your phone. So don't worry about that. Your phone's not going to be full of catalogs, but it does make it easy for you to find that information. If you're not using your phone or an iPad or something to use the customer support app, perhaps you're on a desktop computer or a laptop, then going directly to the Asabli Resource Center may be the best option for you. So you can go to asablidss.com. There at the top is going to be about the third tab over. It's going to say Resource Center. You can then click on Collateral Materials, then select the brand that you're interested in, in this case, Norton. And from there, you can get to all of the things that I mentioned on the customer support app. You can get them on your desktop as well. We lose the functionality of being able to uh, FaceTime or live stream with a tech rep. That's going to have to be done through the app. Um, but we're all using Zoom and, and everything too. So if you have your local DSS rep, I'm sure they can help you out um, as well. 
One thing I want to point out is last year uh, we launched the Asabawi egress calculator. So if you're in project and you want to figure out how many doors you need for a particular size room based on its occupancy type, based on the occupancy load, which way the doors swing, how wide they need to be, all of that information can be really um, complicated and challenging. But our trainer, Katie Flower, has made this awesome tool and made it really easy for you to find that information. So you can get to that at egresscalc.asabloy.com and also on our um, Asabloy DSS uh, website for the Academy, you can find uh, recorded sessions where Katie walks you through exactly how to use this awesome tool. I just want to thank everybody for your time on this Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.